I've been wanting to do a wood turned sphere that's half resin and half wood. I've seen where resin will be poured with a piece of burl and you'll get sort of half burl and half resin in the sphere and it looks pretty neat. So what I thought of was to cut a terrain map into the surface of the wood and pour resin on top of that. So you'd get a sphere where the, the seam between the resin and the wood is a small map of a landscape. We had been to Newberry Crater a few years ago, and I thought that was a pretty cool surface. And I'm realizing now it was actually several years ago as the, the kids were pretty small and super excited about being there. <laughs> So I found a model of the area, and I could bring that into to Fusion 360 and set up the, the cam paths for that. I did a roughing pass first, and then a finishing pass. I tried for the first time a tapered bit with a point, or, or a very small cutting surface on the end of the bit. That let me get really fine detail on the cut of the model. So even though this was a small piece of about three and a half inches in diameter, it took, I think, about half an hour to cut. But it came out pretty nice. I need to make a container to hold the resin as it's poured over the surface. So I cut a circle at the edge of the terrain model, and I'm hoping I can wrap a piece of plywood around that circle and hold it in place. And this will make a cylinder to fill with resin. I cut a bunch of relief cuts in the plywood so it'll bend. And I figured out the length. And then clamped it in place. I was thinking I would use glue, but the clamps actually hold it well enough. So I have, I didn't think about this, I have these little holes where, where I cut these slots to make the, the plywood bend. And now I have these little holes on the bottom here where the resin's gonna come out. So I thought I'd just plug it with hot glue. I was thinking I was gonna glue this piece of wood. This hot glue is totally not gonna work. <laughs> I think the clamps are gonna hold it in place well enough. So I'm just gonna plug these with hot glue. So I mixed up some resin. I'm using Alumilite Clear Slow Resin. It has a work time of 12 minutes and a diamond time of two to four hours. My relief cuts that I tried to fill with hot glue leaked. So I put the whole mold in a little bucket and put that in the pressure pot. Once you're pouring the resin, you, you can't really stop and start to fix stuff. <laughs> it's gonna be whatever it is. So I put that under pressure. Once this set up, I did a second pour to fill up the rest of the cylinder as a bunch of the resin had leaked out. But some of it stayed behind to, to plug up the holes, <laughs> which is why it's filled at this point when I pull it out. And it's completely stuck to my bucket, which I had to tear apart to get off. Now at this point, I let it sit for a month or two before I got back to it. take the clamps off and I have this block of resin at the bottom so I figure I can cut that off on the bandsaw. The resin in the cylinder looks clear at this point. I can put it on the lathe. So I started by putting it with the wood side facing out and really at this point I'm just going to make it round and make a tenon for the chuck to hold on to. With the chucks I have, I don't have, and I don't think they make 
jaws that reach a specific diameter, somewhere around two to two and a half inches, I think, which is right around where this cylinder is. So I can just barely hold it before I start to turn, but once I turned it round, it was too small for these jaws. But the next size down wouldn't reach to this size, so I had to make a smaller tenon on the end and change the jaws on the chuck. You can see it's, it's not gonna fit with these jaws. They won't close enough to, to get around the cylinder. I can take the chuck off and change the jaws on it. Then I can hold the wood side of the cylinder and the resin is now at the tailstock end. I can start to form this into a sphere now, which means carving down the corner of the resin and carving a valley into the, the wood side of the sphere. I was figuring out at this point that the angle of the tool worked best a little bit different on the resin and on the wood. On the resin, what I found is holding the tool almost horizontal to the material cuts really nicely and leaves a really nice surface. But for the wood, I wanted a little bit more of an angle of the blade to the wood. That seemed to cut a little better. So at this point where the wood and the resin are separated, this worked well because I could do one side one way and the other side the other way. The resin cut really well, but it left these long strands of plastic, I guess, <laughs> that would get wrapped around the workpiece. I, I figured out I could kind of push the tool into that and kind of grab the, the strands of pieces that were caught on the, on the lathe. and this is the wood side. I had figured out about where the center of the sphere would be. I had tried to dry the wood out as much as possible before pouring the resin, and it cracked when I did this, which at first I didn't like, but now that the resin has filled those cracks and they kind of go down into the ground, almost like fissures under the volcano, I actually kind of really like them now. <laughs> And you can take a round object and kind of line it up in space with the sphere to kind of see how close you are to a circle. I can start to get ready to rotate the sphere. I have a, a cup for the tailstock and the drive side of the lathe that hold the sphere. And it's nice to sort of freshen those up every time I use them as they're wood and they're, they tend to go out of round just slightly over time. I can carefully start to turn the sphere in a different orientation. And at this point, it's just a matter of moving the sphere into different orientations and carving the, the circle of the sphere into it. As you do that over and over again, it gets closer and closer to a sphere. And at this point, I was turning both wood and resin at the same time. I had to find a tool orientation that worked with both of those materials. I found that holding the tool somewhere in between horizontal and a little bit of an angle seemed to work pretty well and would cut both the resin and the wood with a smooth surface. So once I had it pretty close to a sphere, I could sand. I found that sanding on these spheres actually is pretty easy and goes pretty well. And I can start, I think I started at 220 on the sandpaper. So pretty high. 
And I think I went up to 600. The thing that I did differently on this one is that I was sent some Yorkshire grit, which I used to polish up the sphere in the, the end. I've never used this before, so I just followed the instructions that came with it. And it seemed to work pretty well. I, I think I didn't get the scratches from the sandpaper out enough before I started, so I ended up having to do a few passes with the Yorkshire grit. But it does what it's supposed to. It basically polishes the resin. And it seems to be a little bit of a finish itself. So I didn't add any more finish to the piece. So the things that I was worried about, like getting a nice finish on the resin and turning such a small sphere worked out great. And I solved those problems. <laughs> but there were a few other issues. Like I got some bubbles above the wood. I think I didn't get the wood dry enough. And I think that the bubbles are from a tiny amount of water in the wood coming out. You can see there's sort of a plane that the bubbles come up to, and then above that it's clear, and I think that's the, the second pour that I did of resin. So I think the three things I would do the next time is to do an object in the surface of the wood that's more of a positive, like a mountain or a building, and not a crater, <laughs> as the crater doesn't really stand out much through the resin. The second thing I would do is make sure I dry the wood to 0% water. I actually kind of like the bubbles in this. It would just be nice to have control over them. I think that's my point about the bubbles. And what I would do is make sure the holes in my plywood ring are absolutely filled. I can't just do it with hot glue. If you'd like, I've got a video that's more focused on wood turning a sphere, which I have a link to here. Thanks for watching.